so now let's move on to our next topic, which is about composition of functions. So remember, it is possible to define operations on certain sets of functions under suitable circumstances. So let's look at some operations we can define. So let's say for example, let's say we're talking about functions from R to R and G is also going to be a function from R to R. Then the sum function f plus g and the product function f times g are defined as f plus g. If you input something into the sum, it's going to output f of x plus g of x. And then if I input something into the product, and put in an x, it's going to spit out f of x times g of x. So if we're talking about functions of involving real numbers, we can find the sum and the product. But now we're going to kind of transition. Instead of talking about that, we're going to talk about composition. So let's look at the definition for non-empty sets A, B, and C, and functions, F is going to be a function from A to B, and G is going to be a function from B to C. The composition G composed f is the function from a to c defined by g compose f of a is g of f of a for all a and a. So this is the usual composition that you kind of saw back in calculus, but now it's in a more general context. So let's look at an example. Anytime we come across a definition, it's a good idea to look at an example. So let's say A is the set 1, 2, 3, 4. B is going to be the set A, B, C, D. And C is going to be the set... R, S, T, U, and V. And now let's say I define a function from A to B, F, and a function G from B to C by, so F is going to be the function that maps 1 to B. It's going to map 2 to D. It's going to map 3 to A and 4 to A, and then G is going to be the function that maps G is from B to C, so it's going to map A to U, B to R, C to R, and then D to S. So remember that we have a way of visualizing functions, and that will come in and help us here when we're looking at compositions. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw both of these functions kind of next to each other. So here's my set A, here's my set B, and here's my set C. So I'm going to fill in with my elements here. One, two, three, and four. B has the element A, B, C, and D. And then finally, C has R, S, T, U, 
and v. So now first you're going to draw the function f. So if you look back up at f, what happened in f? 1 goes to b, so draw an arrow from 1 to b, or a line. And then 2 goes to d, draw an arrow from 2 to d. Okay, and then 3 goes to a, so draw an arrow from 3 to a. And then 4 goes to a as well, so this function is not 1 to 1, but that's okay. So there we go. So there's f, and now you're going to repeat that process but with the function g now. So g goes from a to u, a goes to u, so connect up a and u, and then b goes to r, draw an arrow from b to r, c goes to r as well, so an arrow from c to r, and then finally d goes to s, so d, draw an arrow from d to s. So now when you're looking for the composition, so in this case we're looking at g compose f, this function, you're going to start over on the left with an element out of a, and then you're going to see where it ends up if you follow all the way through to c. So if you start at 1, 1 goes to b, but then b goes to r, so you get 1 going to r. Now 2, 2 goes to d, but then d goes to s, so you get 2 comma s. Now 3, 3 goes to a, and a goes to u, so you get 3 u. And then finally, 4 goes to a, and a, we already said, goes to u, so 4 is going to go to u. And this is our composition function right here. So if you visualize these two functions right next to each other and follow from your elements of A over to your elements of C, it'll be really easy to write down the elements in this function in this set here.